dialogue box, and you can see that one of the books that I've created as a source that's available in my master list is James Conrad's Musical Instruments Are My Life. And so I can go ahead and use this as a citation, and it's going to preview what it is that the citation will look like. So right next, to, when it says citation, right next to that sentence, it's going to put in parentheses Conrad 2005. And then bibliography entry will actually say Conrad James, Musical Instruments Are My Life, uh, Phoenix was the city of publish, and AccuSource is the name of the company and what year it was published. Now, of course, if I want to, I can create a new one. So I can go ahead and say, well, I need a new source. And you'll notice that it has all kinds of different types of sources that you can use. You can use books. You can use periodicals like journal, uh, like uh, you know, news uh, ma magazines, newspapers, things like that. Conference proceedings that were written and transcripted reports. I mean, take a look at this: electronic sources, interview, patents, miscellaneous uh, book sections. If you want to take it from that, journal articles. So let's say we want to add. Uh, go ahead and uh, do another, uh, uh, we'll do a journal article, okay? And what it'll do is it'll say, okay, what's the name of uh, the author? And so in this case, we'll say that's uh, Mr., of course, Jeremy Chara, my good friend and Cisco extraordinaire instructor. And then we can say, what's the title of uh, his uh, particular journal article? And it was, you know, on the uh, history of big band musicians. And we'll call it uh, Big Band Era Magazine. What year was it? Well, we'll say that it was uh, 2004 that uh, that article year came out. And what pages? Well, that was uh, this one actually came from uh, page 12. Okay, so we have all that. Now notice, this is just kind of a limited kind of a thing here for the source. You can also add so much more. If I click on this, it's going to say what was the month, the day, who the editor is, who the publisher is. It just depends on how much information you want to put in there. What's the short title, what issue, volume, standard number. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. But what they do ask for, at a minimum, based on the Chicago Manual of Style, is the author, the title, the journal name, what year, and what pages it was on. So we'll say, uh, we'll take that back off and just say, this is the information we want. We click OK, and now look at this. I've got Jeremy's thing. I've got James's thing right here. I can choose any, you know, any which one of these. Big Bandera Magazine, 2004, page 12. So now I can go ahead and say, well, you know, this is, you know, which one do I want for my source? Well, you can, of course, you know, choose any one of these. And just, I can double click on it if I want. Or I can, you know, do just about anything else. But I'll go ahead and hit close right here and say that this came from Jeremy. So now I come up to insert citation, click down, and then I can choose from this. I can also add a new source. I can add a new placeholder if I want to change it. I can even search libraries if I've uh, loaded up some libraries that I have. So we set Jeremy Chara, History of Big Band Musicians. I go ahead and say that, Chara, 2004 for this particular quote. And of course, I would, you know, maybe make this in italics so that shows and you know, I'll use my uh, you know, formatting there. So now it has a little bit and that was Chara 2004. And then mean down meanwhile down here on Benny Goodman, we'll put some quotes around this right here. Oop, a little too close to the other one. There we go. And then uh, we'll make this italics, use my thing. See, I'm just showing you some of the things we've already learned. Look how quick I'm able to do this. And then I just come over here, and I'm going to insert the citation at the end here. I click Insert Citation. This is James Conrad, Musical Instruments in My Life. Notice this is Conrad, 2005. And so this is now set up. And then, of course, up here I still have Chara, 2004. And notice when I hover over this, it does give me that kind of blue, like, oh, this is a, this is a tagged field inserted. Now, of course, if I come over here to Home and I click on this, it is going to tell me that, you know, here's the quotes, and then it also shows, you know, the Jeremy Chara aspect of it, too, because this is just a placeholder for this particular thing. So we, we have all that set up. Now that's all good, you know, well and good. All right, so now I have the citation. But what if I want to have a bibliography built on this or a works cited? It just depends on how you want to do that. We come back here to the references. And let's say I go down here and, you know, usually at the very end you have your index. And at the end of the index, I'll add a couple of spaces here before my endnote. And now I want to insert my bibliography. 
Now, if I look right here, if I click on this, it says, well, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do it as a bibliography, or do you like it as a works cited? Now, this is, uh, you know, it's labeled works cited. Some people like to use that. Or bibliography means that all the sources associated with the document, uh, this is anything that, you know, that you have there. Now, all I have to do is click Insert Bibliography, which will do the same thing. And I go with that. Bam, there it is. Now, what happened there? It didn't say bibliography, did it? Well, that's because I didn't use one of those pre-built ones. If I undo this and I come up here and I pick bibliography, look at that. It says, ah, now bibliography, it's all one little table. And it said, I did Jeremy Char, History of Big Band Musicians. I did James Conrad, Musical Instruments Are My Life. Now, why is this important? Because now if I come up here... And let's say underneath, uh, well, we've got the modern era here, but let's say I come back up here under the Middle Ages. And now uh, this is going to be, um, I'll go ahead and put some quotes here. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say I want to insert a citation. I need to add a new source. So I go in here and we'll say that this is going to be a book. The author is Dan... Charbonneau, of course, Dan, who watches all of our CBT Nuggets video, I think I spelled his name right. If not, I am so fired. Okay, so title is going to be Middle Ages and Music. The year published, all these, of course, are required based on the Chicago Manual of Style. So we'll say that this is 2001. The city was Portland, and the publisher is CBT Nuggets Music Arm. Okay, so now we have it all set up and ready to go. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now notice it goes ahead and says, all right, now you have that. And by the way, if I now open up my Manage Sources, see, here's Dan right there, Middle Ages in Music, ready to go. Now what happens though is, of course, if I scroll down here to my table, uh-oh, or my bibliography, look, nothing's happened here. What, what, you know, what can I do? So now if I double click on this, you'll notice it opens up the table information that I have here. Now I can make some changes if I want to change the way that it looks. I can convert it back to static text or, look at this, update citations and bibliography I click on that and bada bing bada boom here's Dan right there he's now added as part of uh, the bibliography so this is a great way for us to come in here and add this bibliography based upon all the works that we've done and I've used the new thing in Word 2007 which is our source manager which is going to list all the sources of the documents and even the electronic things you know you can do TV shows you can do just about anything and now you're set and ready to go and you know that you're being honest and that the research material will be accepted by these journals and the other places because now you go, hey, look, I took this information from here. I use this person's you know, information. And so that way you appropriately give the right citations, and that means that your uh, reports, your research, whatever it is, will be accepted. A great way to close out our Nugget videos on references and indexing with our footnotes and endnotes. We can make our little comments that we need to or add a little bit more information and put that either at the end of the page with a footnote or an endnote, which is at the end of a chapter, section, or maybe even at the end of the document itself. Then we had the source manager. This is brand new for Word 2007. Boy, was it needed. Now instead of having, let's say you've got uh, 150 citations from magazine articles and and, and TV shows and books. Well, now you can collect them all, and now as you go through, you can just simply, once you get to the end of that place that you quoted from, you click Insert Citation, pick it, boom, 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 and then at the very end, you can create that bibliography of all those people that you quoted and used their material, and that way you're on your way to getting your uh, document maybe published for yourself, or perhaps maybe just sharing with the rest of us. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 Collaboration. 
Let's take a journey back in time to the days that you were in maybe kindergarten or first grade and we all sat down in a circle and we were required to share and do show and tell and all the different things that were going on. Well, maybe not that much, but in the world of Word 2007, we typically have people look at our documents, make some changes, some suggestions. Collaboration is a powerful tool of the Office product and we have some great tools we can use here in Word 2007. Anytime you're talking about collaboration, you are going to have a lot of different things you can turn on and review. And So we're going to take a look at how we track the changes in our document, then how we send our documents out to other people for them to review, some options that we can change on the colors of the changes, whether we put underlines or strike throughs, what color it will appear, merging the documents that once we get them the changes, we can merge them together and then see what the different changes were, and then we can accept to reject those changes. We can protect our documents. Maybe you don't want to send it out and have people mess with the formatting. You can do that. And then we'll finalize our document so it'll be read-only and no more changes can be made. So we'll start off here with, of course, our history of instruments that we've been working on over the past couple of Nugget videos. And right now I am on my computer and I want to start making some changes. But of course, I'm going to eventually going to be sending these changes out to other people and I want to make sure that I'm keeping a track of, you know, what's going on. So in order to do that, I need to come up here under the ribbon on the review tab. So I go ahead and click on the review tab. We've already kind of seen the whole thing with the spelling and grammar and some of the proofing and some of the things that we can do. But here is where we're going to start concentrating on making some changes, tracking the changes, accepting or rejecting changes. We'll eventually, at the end of this, show how to compare and then even how do we can protect our document from too, uh, too many unnecessary changes here. So first thing we're going to have to do is turn the tracking on. Now to do this, you just simply come up here, you click on it and say, well, I want to track changes. So we go ahead and turn on track changes and it'll say, all right, now track changes is now turned on. So now let's say I come down here to uh, my uh, history of instruments and ancient history and I start doing some editing. Like, let's say that uh, this particular phrase here is is not uh, good and I, I want to delete it. So I highlight it and then I hit delete. Now watch what happens. It just puts a red line through it, turns and changes the color. So now, even though I can still see this line, a change has been made. Now if I roll over it, you'll notice it says that Chris Ward deleted this on this particular day at this particular time and this is what I deleted. So I can see it with right there. The boxes just show up right there. Now I can also go ahead and add something. So if I come over here and say Persians and Greeks, the uh, Greeks really enjoyed, let's see, really enjoyed stringed instruments like the harp. So now this shows up. And again, if I roll my mouse over, it says that Chris Ward is the one that uh, inserted this. And so it's an insert. This would be a delete and what I deleted. And then I can even make comments. So for like Persian and Greeks, I can say, well, okay, this might be uh, something I might want to make a comment on. I can highlight it and just say insert comment. Now watch what happens when I do this. It's going to bring out over here to the side one of my balloon comments. And here it says comment CW1, which is the name of uh, that I've given. Remember when we installed our office, it asked us what the name was and the year initials. And so I put, well, CW. I can change this, by the way. We'll see that in the nugget on how to personalize, which is our uh, next one when we you know, get to that. So right here I might say, um, are there any other ethnic groups of this period we should cover. I'll put that question in. So now I have a comment, and so anyone who's reviewing this will go, oh, you know, Chris asks a great question. By the way, all these things, as an author, I've written books for Cisco and uh, Microsoft, and anytime I did this, I had, of course, editors. I had a technical editor, and I had a standard editor, my, uh, you know, overall editor, and they would, I would send out the stuff, and they would send back things like this. They would make comments like, hey, you know, are you sure you, you forgot to cover uh, IP subnetting here? Are you sure you, you know, maybe do that or hey by the way on Microsoft you're talking about command line maybe we should do the NS up 
NSLOOKUP command here. And so they would add little things, especially my technical editor. He might say, you know, that's not exactly true. You might want to, uh, you know, clear that up a little bit. So, you know, these are thing comments, and then, of course, my editor would come in and go, you know, let's move this. And so she would take whole sections and then move it to somewhere. So let, let's say I can pretend here. Let's say this whole area right here needs to be moved. So click down here, 